Hello and welcome to History Bubble, as per Jan. Last time, the First Sea Republic was conquered by the Soviet Union after the short-lived and tumultuous lifetime. The Soviet invasion had been quick and saw no resistance, as almost the whole of the Serbian army was fighting Armenia, which also gave a good excuse for the Georgian to not get involved, even if they had an alliance. After the establishment of the Azerbaijani Soviet Socialist Republic, it took a few months of the army and peasants to fully comprehend the situation and go into revolt which was promptly crushed. Due to the inorganization of the attempt, which resulted in an estimated 16,000 dead. A problem also occurs with states of Karabakh and Nakashivan due to their connection with both Armenia and Azerbaijan. While Karabakh was no historically Armenian region, with a large population of Armenians, the Azeri population was of a similar size and its connection to the Azeri economy was essential when Nakashivan became a special border zone. Sankastur and Nakashivan also became part of the Armenian SSR when it was founded, but this was soon changed once again to its final state where Azerbaijan got Nakashivan and Karabakh partly as a reward for the acceptance of the later Transcaucasian Soviet while Armenia got Sansigur when Azerbaijan became an SSR. The Center for Muslim Issues were moved to Kazan, to Baku, to lessen influence of Kazan Muslims. The Azeris quickly grew irritated with the Soviet government, while they at first were reason to content having the local socialist leader popular before the revolution, Nirman Narminov, but the Soviet Azeri Republic soon along with the other ones in the Caucasus, abolished in favor of a Transcaucasian one, where Narimov was appointed as one of the leaders, but was soon sent to the main government in Moscow and replaced by a less local and popular leader. Transcaucasia was opposed by all three republics, but was pushed through anyway. This was a normal practice in the Soviet Union, and along with recent nationalism in Azerbaijan resulted in a low membership rate in the Communist Party, being the lowest of all of the republics. Movements who tried to introduce communism and reduce the influence of Islam were especially present in Azerbaijan, as the host for the Congress of the Peoples of the East, where communism in its western form were to be introduced to the people far away from Europe and was also one of the first places to adopt the Latin alphabet to try to get them away from the learnings of the Quran and instead to communist texts. As such, Baku became home for the Turkic Alphabet Committee for a while where it was taken to spread the Latin alphabet to all Turkish speakers in the Soviet Union, but this was reversed a few decades later as the Cyrillic script was instead to be used in the Turkish regions. But the de-Islamization did not stop at language as they opened religious museums, tried to end holidays, but mostly through the use of women's rights by post it with Islam. The seizure by the state of agricultural land was also not without resistance, with only the cotton industry not resisting and instead welcoming the Soviets to rebuild the industry that had been destroyed by the wars in the 1910s. The process of Azerification was prominent in Azerbaijan, with little autonomy for minorities and little possibility for education in other languages. The Transcaucasian Soviets gave them some autonomy, it came slightly more as the Soviet Socialist Republic of Azerbaijan was re established. Transcaucasian Azerbaijan was also part of the Great to Purge, with most of the former government officials being deposed, expelled, or murdered, along with 12,000 others, or about 5% of the entire population. During the Second World War, 500,000 Azeris were conscripted necessitating a larger female part of the workforce, especially in the oil-rich and important Azerbaijan, which was vital for the war effort, where women eventually made up one-third of the workforce. During the Second World War, Soviets were being pushed back by the Germans in the Caucasus, trying to get tobacco oil fields, but they were defeated, but most of Syria's fighting took no part in the Caucasian front and instead fought in other areas. There were also around 25 to 35,000 Azeris fighting for the Germans in the war. After the war, the North Caucasus nationalities that were given support to the Germans were promptly deported in mass, and Azerbaijan were only executed from suffering the same fate due to the importance of their oil and being a non Russian SSR. At the beginning of the war, there were talks 
of the Soviet invading Iran for Iranian Azerbaijan or Tabriz due to their connection with Germany in helping them modernize and eventually invade it, together with the British. When Iran refused to expel the Yemen's in the nation and occupy Tabriz and most of northern Iran. During the war, the Soviet tried to split up and resentment for the government and Soviets as an alternative which became especially popular in Iranian Azerbaijan because of the special promotion of the Azeri identity. The Soviet had agreed to withdraw the troops by the end of the war. They did not in Tabriz, but the Iranians filed a complaint to the UN and forced the Soviets out of Iran. After the death of Stalin, Transcaucasia, as the Soviets tried to reform, became one of the most militarized areas of the USSR, partly due to the desire to make them one entity and as a location without border pub states. But the new Transcaucasian idea only lasted a decade and it was once again abandoned because of the large pushback and difficulties in uniting the three nations. After the death of Stalin, the Stalin-aligned government of the Azerbaijan SSR was purged and removed from office due to corruption and de-Stalinization. Azerbaijan, while somewhat wealthy from oil, was quite poverty stricken outside of that industry with subpar agriculture and a large slum building outside of Baku due to the insufficient construction by the Soviets and their oil production was started to be rivaled by other states of the Soviet Union. But through the 70s and 80s this started to change once again with fast industrialization and the first secretary of the Azerbaijani Commissariat Heydar Aliyev as its head. Soon, Azerbaijan became the fastest industriously growing public in the Union and agriculture became significantly improved. But it was too little too late as the oil production was dwindling and livestock production put to the side necessitating rationing and stagnation to improvements. But even the prosperity that occurred was partially wasted on corruption and bribes, especially to the KGB whom ILA had a lifelong association with. He also continued the Stalin area glorification of leaders, creating busts and statues of himself into the Gorbachev era, when such things were heavily discouraged, but largely of nepotism from the tribal structure that had ruled the land for so long was still present and represented a large part of the corruption. Islam also still played a large part of Azeri life, even with the religious belief on the Soviets being enforced on the population, but while most of the population still followed the new rules and restrictions, they still held on to the Muslim beliefs and practiced in semi-secrecy. To what degree this was the case is disputed, and whether Islam saw revitalization, we have started to show more on Azerbaijan of the Soviets is debated. When nationalism was still Represented in the Caucasus during the last decades of the Soviet Union, Azerbaijani language became more and more accepted and soon was integrated into all schools and work as the former system with native and Russian schools, where the Russian schools were held almost all the power. During this time, Azerbaijani nationalism still started to develop, further with focus on Albania, the first republic of Turkishness in opposition to Armenia. This led to the history of Azerbaijan being written by the Azeris as having a clear ethno-linguistic throughout the whole of its history, while the Russians and the Soviets did everything in their power to justify their occupation. But by the mid-80s, the Soviet Union was on the brink of collapse, and the ethnic tensions between Armenia and Azerbaijan, especially in Nagorno-Karabakh, was at an all-time high. And that is where we will leave for today. I hope to see you next time for the collapse of the Soviet Union and Caucasia and Azerbaijan and the Nagorno-Karabakh war.